Sometimes our robotic exploration of another world doesn't go as planned. Sometimes a Mars rover drilling operation fails to collect a rock sample. And sometimes this can lead to a discovery that no one anticipated. On this episode of Mars Guy. At the end of the previous episode, Perseverance had prematurely concluded a core sample drilling operation. Here's Mars Guy for scale. Its sensors probably recognized that the rock was crumbling underneath. Engineers would say that it faulted out. And there it stayed for the next three sols, presumably while the engineers diagnosed the fault. On the fourth sol, Perseverance was commanded to lift its robotic arm, which starts by releasing the preload force that was used to stabilize it. This appears to move the world but it actually just moves the camera mounted on the body of the rover as it lowers a bit in response to the unloading. Perseverance extracted the drill bit from the crumbled rock and presented it for inspection to MassCam Z. This revealed no apparent damage, but also no apparent rock core inside, which was perhaps predictable. Confirmation that there really is nothing inside happened a few saws later when the sample tube inside the coring bit was brought on board and presented to cash cam in its standard manner. The tube gets raised a centimeter at a time through the focal point until the bottom comes into focus. There's just tiny sand grains here, a trivial amount of contamination for when this tube gets reused on a future sample. Back at the scene of the failed drilling operation, there's now a cluster of rocks that clearly stand out from the rest. The abrasion patch, which exposed the interior of a nearby rock, provided no visible hint of anything unusual about the rocks here. But whitish rocks in the Martian landscape are unusual. On a planet absolutely dominated by gray volcanic rocks, think lava flows and ash deposits, Whitish rocks most typically form from some secondary process involving water. In this case, on the outer rim of Jezero Crater, that could be hot water or even steam following the impact event that formed the crater. This was the scenario suggested to explain the origin of a rare for Mars occurrence of rocks made out of quartz on the inner rim of Jezero Crater. See episode 210. Hydrothermal activity can either acid leach silicate rocks, leaving behind a residue of amorphous silica that converts to quartz, or it can concentrate silica leached elsewhere and deposit it in fractures to make quartz veins. The vein story better explains these rocks because they appear to be solid quartz. This is hard to do with acid leaching. The latest white rocks don't appear to be solid quartz. The close-up view shows what looks like more of a coating of whitish material on rock surfaces. This could still represent vein material, but it also could be from acid leaching of the rocks. And it's not even a given that the whitish stuff is quartz or silica. It could be a sulfate mineral like gypsum, which is common both as vein fill and in acid sulfate leaching scenarios. Turns out there are other examples of small, whitish rocks in this place that at least suggest that whatever process produced the ones crushed by the drill was not limited to that single spot. Identifying the composition of these rocks will go a long way in figuring out what process produced them. And thanks to the various spectrometers on board the rover, that answer is probably already known. Now we just have to wait to learn the rest of the story about this accidental discovery. I'm pretty sure, though, that the whitish stuff coating the smashed rocks is not actually a silver lining. <laughs>